guys, I'm obsessed with the colors. Ooh, honey, give it to me. Hey guys, what's up, what's going on? It's your girl Ashley, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, what I'm going to be doing, it's kind of like a full face of first. Fun fact, these have to be hands down my favorite videos to film because I really get to dabble into a bunch of different products on camera and share my thoughts with you. And that's what I really, really love about it. I did also give the vault another try today. I am working with the Armed and Gorgeous palette. I know you guys still wanted to see that four part series. I can't guarantee that I will do the four part series based on what happened with the first palette, but I will try to kind of incorporate the palettes in my regular uploading schedule the best way I know how to. So if you guys are here for it, if you guys are excited to see how I got this look, what products I use, all that jazz, be sure to subscribe and also don't forget to click that bell to turn on your post notifications so that we are notified anytime I upload which is three times a week every single week that's like my thing like how many of you guys say it with me out there three times a week every single week hmm? just me probably just me I upload every Tuesday Thursday and Sunday at 9 a.m. and you guys don't want to miss out on that with that, let's go ahead and hop into it. So first and foremost, I have been trying out a new moisturizer. You guys know for a minute, I've been obsessed with the Tatcha Water Cream. I am almost out of this. I was about to purchase a brand new one over on the Sephora website, but I kind of want to give something else a try just to see how my skin likes it. I did get this sent to me in PR. This is Charlotte's Magic Cream. This stuff is hella expensive. It's like $100, like how? why but i'm gonna mix in a little bit of the drunk elephant anti-pollution sunshine serum it says guard and glow with coconut extract right here now i've heard nothing but great things about drunk elephant it recommends that you mix this in with a serum or a moisturizer so i'm gonna do about one pump mixed in with my moisturizer just to see how i like it hello i need to put my phone on silent and i'm actually gonna kind of work this into the skin so it does have like a very bronzy glowy tint to it do you guys see that granted i look a little orange right now but we're gonna work her out we're gonna work her in so i'm not gonna lie after it's settled into the skin it looks really beautiful my skin looks nice and hydrated and it also gave me kind of like a tint so you can apply this all over your face you can apply it on your neck your chest all over your body if you want like a touch of color to the skin. Moving right along, I do have a new primer to share with you. This is by Farah Ali. This is the Skin Tune Blur Face Primer. Y'all, I was in it to win it. When I saw that she was coming out with this, I was like, honey, face tune in a bottle, I need it. So it says use with or without makeup, use as a blurring and tuning serum after moisturizer. So we just applied our moisturizer and now I'm gonna go in with this and kind of just blur the skin. It is a fairly thick product. Um, I feel like it's a little bit hard to use in a dropper form. I kind of wish this was in a squeeze out tube. As you can see, like only a little bit of product has come out so far. And it is in that same dropper tube that all of their serums are in. So I have a little bit of the primer. I'm going to work it onto my fingertips and I'm going to apply it in my T-zone. Pretty much all the areas of my face that I want a blurring effect like let's keep it real i want my whole face to have a blurring effect but we're gonna use her very sparingly honestly i don't see a really big difference as far as like blurring and i'm keeping it real i'm keeping it 100 because at the end of the day I kind of feel like primers are very gimmicky and I try to say that in the best way possible. You guys know I kind of like swear by some primers, but sometimes I'm just like, what did you really do? Except add an additional step to my makeup routine, but I'm gonna put a little bit more. Now I did say I have a brow product to share with you guys on camera. This is by NARS. This is the NARS Brow Perfector in the shade Lava. What I like about it is that it is that dual ended retractable spoolie pencil that we all know and love, very much comparable to Anastasia Brow Wiz. I haven't used Anastasia Brow Wiz in a hot minute. I definitely need to get my hands on it just to kind of like reminisce a little bit because it's been a while since the last time I used that. But I'm going to take the spoolie end and I'm just going to brush through my brows per use to ensure that they're all going in the same direction. Then I'm going to use the actual brow product and I'm going to start filling in my brow starting from the very bottom. And I like to just underline the whole 
interesting at first. Mmm, okay, I see you, Nars. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the spoolie and I'm gonna start blending out the line that we created on the bottom just to kind of fill in parts of the brow without making it too dark. Sometimes I feel like I just go way too overboard with my shading in my brow. So I like to just start off with a little bit of product and then I'll go back in and then I'll start combing it out. So far, the brow product isn't super waxy to the point where I feel like it's tugging on my brows. It's gliding on my brows very, very nicely. It's also not too creamy to the point where I feel like I'm wasting product. So that's always a positive thing. I'm just gonna put a little bit more pressure onto the tail of my brow because I do like that to be the most intense part of my brow. So for the most part, I think it looks pretty, pretty good. I did already moisturize my face. I put on primer, things like that. So I do have a little bit more slip on my eyebrows, which is why I feel like this part isn't super defined, but it's okay. I always like to go in with a concealer to clean up my brows anyways. All right, brows are done. I'm now gonna go in with my tried and true NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer to underline my brows and also prime my eyelids. This one is in the shade Creme Brulee. Honestly, I don't love Creme Brulee as much as I love uh, Medium One Custard. I thought I was gonna love this because it was more of a lighter shade, but I don't love her as much as I do as the shade Medium One Custard. I will be repurchasing that shade during the Sephora sale. I am purchasing everything online just so that way I could uh, earn cash back by shopping through Ebates. I will have my Ebates linked down below in case any of you guys are interested in saving money and getting cash back as well. Once I have my brow underlined, I'm just gonna go in with a fluffy brush. This one is by It Cosmetics and really pack on that concealer and make sure it's nice and even because this is going to be my eyelid primer. Oh my God, how I've missed you. I've missed you so much. Now that my eyes are nice and primed, I'm gonna go in with the Morphe X Jaclyn Hill collaboration from her vault. This one is in the shade Armed and Gorgeous. Now this one was highly requested from you guys. If you guys haven't seen my first review on the Bling Boss palette, I definitely recommend that you guys go check it out because let's just say you're gonna wanna watch that. I'm doing this because a lot of you guys requested that I use some of the other palettes just to see if I had the same problems as I did with Bling Boss. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. You guys asked for it, so clearly your wish is my command. I mean, I do what you guys want to see more times than not. The first shade I'm gonna use in the palette is called Access, which is a really pretty yellow shade. And I'm just gonna pop it right here on the very outer corner and also in the crease. And I didn't set down my lids or anything like that. A lot of people were saying in my Bling Boss video that the reason the eyeshadows perform patchy is because I did not set down my lids. And I find that to be completely false. I feel like setting down your lids is a myth and Essentially, it does help you blend better, but it also takes away from the overall pigmentation of the shadows, which is why I do not set down my lids anymore. I feel like I've kind of gotten a hold of blending, so I don't find it to be necessary. But if you are a beginner in makeup, definitely set down your lids because it will help you with blending a little bit, but not too much. I'm just taking the shade and I'm really just rocking it into my crease with a Morphe M441. And so far, she's pretty pigmented. This is a palette that I was also really excited for just because I found it to be different than other things we've seen on the market. So kudos to Jacqueline for creating such a unique color story for this palette. I do kind of feel like I have to build her up a little bit more than usual. Honestly, it's no big deal. I'm also going in circular motions right here towards the very outer corner just to really pack that color on and I think so far it looks really really good like she looks really pretty she's blending out nicely thoughts on the shade called access she blended out extremely beautiful I did not have any issues with it getting patchy or anything like that she also built up very nicely in the beginning she was like a little bit sheer going on I feel like I really had to pack on the color but it's not bad, it's pretty, pretty good if you ask me. I'm now gonna go in with this shade right here called Agent, which is a little bit more of like a mustard shade. And I'm going to pop this right here on the very outer corner. It's kind of like a mustard with like a hint of orange to it. And I am applying it with a Morphe M514 right here on the very outer V. And I'm also going to stick it a little bit into the crease. If you guys haven't seen my video all about what brushes I like to use for blending, I definitely recommend that you guys check it out because I do go into detail as to why I use each brush for each step of my blending process. I find it to be helpful. Other people find it to be helpful. Just check it out. Okay. Also, a lot of people were saying 
in my bling boss video that the reason the shadows got patchy is because I tried to layer too many colors on top of each other, which again is false. I've been doing this for a really long time, you guys. Trust me when I tell you, I know how to blend eyeshadows. I'm very, very familiar with what it takes to get a seamless eye look. This is something I do on the daily, um, whether I'm using Jaclyn Hill Morphe products or if I'm using drugstore products or super luxurious products. So it shouldn't matter how many shades I layer in one area, it shouldn't get patchy. Like it shouldn't just like wipe off, if you know what I mean. So, so far this palette is not doing that. This palette is blending so much better than Bling Boss. Let me just say that. The next shade I'm gonna take is called Secure, which has a little bit more of an orange undertone than that of Agent. So I'm going to place her right here on the very outer corner. I am using a Morphe M507 to do this. I will say Secure feels a lot more creamy than the mattes in the Bling Boss palette. Like she feels buttery to touch, whereas the mattes were really, really dry. I'm also gonna take Secure right here in the very inner corner, as you can see, and I'm just taking my brush and blending it back and forth. I'm also going to take this shade and put it in my crease like so. So I'm really just taking the brush and I'm working it back and forth in small circular motions just so that way I could really just place the color right there in the socket and really just intensify the color. I think it's crazy that I ordered the vault collection, like everything as a bunch. And then my Bling Boss palette was super patchy and this one is blending out really, really awesome. I feel like it has a lot to do with the production of the palettes. I feel like there are a lot of inconsistencies. So that kind of sucks, like not kinda, that actually really sucks because no one is really gonna know what they're gonna get in their palette. If I had to give a recommendation to any of you guys, it would be to just wait. At the end of the day, I feel like Morphe is going to continue making these palettes just because it's Jaclyn Hill and they always love to sell a bunch of her products. But I didn't buy the original Jaclyn Hill palette when it first came out just because there were a lot of things going on like it is right now. Anytime she launches a product with a brand, it's kind of just like a shit show in the beginning and then after a while, things start to settle down and then the product is amazing. So I feel like just waited out for them to kind of fix the issues with the palettes that they have right now and save yourself the $50 and save yourself all of the trouble. Granted, this palette is really, really beautiful, like I said, um, but I feel like it's like a hit or miss. Some palettes are good, some palettes are not. And that's the really shitty part about it. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of Secure on an M441 and I'm just gonna kind of blend this out into the crease a little bit more. So for this look, I am gonna do a little bit of cut crease action. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the Born This Way multi-use concealer because it is more of a liquidy concealer and I do like to cut my crease with something that is a little bit more liquid as opposed to a cream, like the Soft Matte Complete Concealer by NARS. So I'm gonna take this on a Morphe M421 and I'm gonna apply a little bit of this to my brush, nothing too crazy. And I'm gonna start cutting the crease and I'm just going in patting motions at first because I feel like I have more control of where I'm placing the concealer. I'm just gonna take my finger and blend the edges of the concealer. I do wanna note that I am gonna try to use as many colors as I possibly can within this palette. So the first shade I'm gonna take is a shade right here called Guilt Trip, and I'm gonna take it on that same Morphe M421. I'm gonna spray my brush with Fix Plus because again, Jacqueline always says that she never um, applies shadow without Fix Plus, especially if it is more of a shimmery shadow. So that's what I'm doing, just so that way, yeah, don't come for me in the comment. I'm gonna just pack this right here in the the very inner corner. That shade is really, really pretty in the very inner corner. The next shade I'm gonna take is called Coin. Get your coin, girl. Um, this is actually a deeper gold shade and I'm also going to spray her with some Fix Plus and I'm going to pop it right next to the shade called Guilt Trip. I do feel like I really have to pack on a lot of the shade called Coin because she's not as pigmented. So I have to go in quite a bit to build it up to the intensity that I want, but she's still very, very pretty to say the very least. The next shade I'm gonna take in the palette is called Classified. This is a really beautiful bronzy shade with like green undertones to it almost. And I'm gonna take that with the same Morphe M421, spray her with some Fix Plus, and I'm gonna pop her right here towards the very outer edge kind of blending it into the shade called Coin. I'm gonna go back in and apply a little bit more right there on that edge. 
and really just buff it into coin. Honestly, you guys, I feel like I'm really pressing hard. So out of all the shimmers I've tried so far, this has to be my least favorite because I feel like I have to press super hard in order to get the slightest amount of color payoff. And she just feels like a little bit drier. Now that that's done, I'm gonna go in with the shade called Top Secret on a Morphe M507. And I'm going to start placing her right here. I really just want to slowly gradiate this green into that bronzy shade. Because like I said, it does appear that it has like some green undertones to it. It's not like my favorite, but I feel like I can kind of like make her work with this look. So I'm just popping the green right here towards the very outer corner. So one thing I am noticing with these vault palettes is that the mattes don't blend seamlessly with the shimmers. Like it's so hard to explain, but that's just what I am noticing with these particular palettes. Like as soon as it hits the shimmer, it kind of does something really, really weird right here. And that normally does not happen to me whenever I go in with a matte shade and then blend it into the shimmer, so. I'm actually gonna take my brush and try to brush away all of the green because it was not cute, guys. It just wasn't cute. The next shade I'm gonna take in the palette is called Smooth Criminal, and I'm just gonna pack it right here on the very outer edge to kind of just deepen things up a little bit more. I do want my outer V to be the most intense area of the look, and I will say for the most part that I don't feel like the mattes really blend nicely into the shimmers. They kind of just cake up on top of each other, and I think that has a lot to do with me pressing down so hard to get the shimmer to show up, but that is just what I am experiencing. I think you guys may experience something different since the palettes are so inconsistent. All right, so after blending the shade Smooth Criminal right here on the outer V, you can definitely tell that I was able to build it up and really deepen it up. I'm gonna go in with the shade called Prowl and I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna pop her on closest to the lash line and just buff her inwards like so. Okay, so I'm definitely liking this a million times better. As you can see, I covered up the majority of the shade called Classified. I did not feel like the mattes were blending on top of that shade very well, so I ended up just covering it up a little bit with the brown just because I did not like the way it was looking. I'm gonna take this M514 and I'm just gonna kind of buff out the edges of the brown just so that way I have more of a softer look. So I will say right off top that this side over here is getting a little patchy, which sucks. It just doesn't make sense to me how one side could be fine and then the other side is just like, not the business, you know? I just never experienced something like that, especially like in an eyeshadow palette. But like I said, I am gonna try to continue to blend and pack on the color so that way I can get like a final and completed look. I'm gonna use a packing brush to just pack on the shade right here. I noticed that when you try to blend, it kind of just erases and disappears, which is just strange, but I'm just gonna try to buff out these edges right alongside here like that and then go right back into the the brown. So I'm just packing the brown right here without blending it out because it appears that when I go in and try to like blend, that's when things start to get a little messy and like a little crazy. Just want to kind of buff out these edges right here. And actually that's not really working too well. So I'm gonna go in with a clean M433 right alongside the edge right here. All right, so the eyeshadow is on. As you guys can see, it performed relatively well. It actually performed a lot better than that of Bling Boss. I ran into like two issues or maybe even three. I did not like the shade called Classified, which is that olive -y kind of like bronzy shade. I also did not like the shade called Top Secret. It just did not look good in the crease, but it could just be where I place it. I would definitely try to use her on the very lower lash line because she is in fact a really pretty color. And also the shade called Prowl got patchy right here on this eye. You could definitely still see it. I can't really blend out the color. I have to more so pack. So I did use a M167 and I just took the color and I kind of just packed it right here to kind of intensify it a little bit more. Moving right along, I will be doing liner. I'm gonna use the Maybelline Eye Studio Blackest Black Gel Liner on my MAC 210. This is not a first impressions. You guys know I really do love this gel eyeliner from the drugstore. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create an intense 
cat eye wing because I'm feeling like a wing today. So liner is done for the most part. I'm now gonna go in with mascara. I'm gonna use the brand new NARS Climax Mascara, which I'm pretty excited about. It is a little bit more of like a fatter brush. I'm just gonna wipe off the excess that's on the tip right there. And I'm just gonna kind of comb through my lashes. I'll definitely try this out on its own when I'm not wearing a thick trace of black eyeliner but I kind of just wanted to see what she was all about. I will say I really do like the bristle of the brush. I feel like it reminds me of the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara, which again is one of my favorite high-end mascaras. This is a very typical Ashley thing to do where I'll put on a thick trace of liner when I'm testing out a mascara and you guys can't even see my lashes, but we're gonna keep it rolling. You guys know I was gonna pop on falsies anyways. I do have these lashes from Icon Lashes. They did send these to me in PR. They have these called Bella, which you guys know are right up my alley. And then we also have these guys right here called Slay. Slay? Dammy. Um, but I think I'm gonna go in with Bella just because you guys know I do love a lash that kind of flares out towards the ends. So I'm gonna pop these on and I will be right back. All right, so my lashes are on. They're hella dramatic, but they're also like wispy at the same time. They're super pretty. I had to cut a lot of the lash off. Like look how much of the lash I had to cut off because she was like crazy long but I'm gonna go in with a peach color corrector right here underneath my eyes and also like a little bit right here because I feel like I have a little bit of darkness and discoloration and typically when you have discoloration you do want to go in with a salmon color concealer to color correct those areas so I'm gonna take it right here because in photos I do notice that this area does come off a little bit dark and the product I'm using is by Pixi. This is the Correction Brightening Peach Concentrate. I'm thinking about doing like a facial treatment so that way I can kind of get rid of some of the darkness around my mouth area. Let me know if you guys have ever tried that and what your experience was down below. I'm also gonna take this right here underneath the eyes and on the side of my nose a little bit. So now that I've color corrected all the areas of my face that I wanted to color correct, I'm gonna go in with foundation. I will be using my Hourglass Stick Foundation. Now I originally thought I was gonna go in with the new It Cosmetics matte foundation. I do have it right here. I have a few different shades, but I'm not really going for more of a mattified look today. I do want to use like the new Laura Mercier glow powder. So I feel like that's just kind of like contradicting itself. So I am going to go in with the hourglass foundation stick and I am in the shade sand. As you can see, this has more of a yellow base. I do kind of go in between sand and nude. I am going to be picking up the shade called nude in the sephora sale because i just need her this does come off a little bit too dark for me sometimes but we're gonna make her work today yes we are honey and i'm also going to take the sponge right here by morphe and i'm going to spray her with some fix plus squeeze her and then just buff and blend out the foundation okay so far foundation fuego i'm gonna go in with the light illusion full coverage concealer by flower beauty i told you guys in the past few videos that i've done actually that i really do like this concealer is extremely full coverage underneath the eyes which i really really like so i am going to take this just directly underneath the eyes and buff it out with my morphe sponge Ooh beautiful honey beautiful like you guys know those situations where it's like if it's not broke don't fix it that's how i kind of feel about my current foundation routine with like concealer and stuff i love it so much like i don't even want to change it because it looks so good anyways moving on i'm going to take my collab ultra fine loose setting powder this is the set the stage powder in the shade porcelain ivory and i'm just going to kind of pop this directly underneath my eyes to set that concealer down and in place before it starts to crease. I'm sure a lot of you guys probably already saw this coming, but I'm gonna go in with my face powder. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder in the shade two. I'm just gonna use my same Morphe sponge and I'm just gonna kind of pat it into the skin. I freaking love this powder. A lot of you guys recommended that I try this when I was asking you guys what powder you recommend, whether it was drugstore or high end. And since so many of you guys requested or recommended that I try this, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go in. It's a little bit pricey. I want to say it's like in the $40 range, but I've had her for a little minute now. I've hit pan, which obviously lets you guys know I really, really like it, but it just sets my makeup down so beautifully. It doesn't look like an extra layer of foundation. It really just creates the most 
beautiful, flawless, diffused effect, which I love. All right, so things are definitely coming along. I'm gonna go even further and I'm gonna use the new Laura Mercier Loose Setting Powder Glow. This is their illuminating powder that they just launched. What I'm gonna do with this is something crazy. I know a lot of you guys are gonna be like, what? Like, what are you doing? Instead of taking this on the highest points of my cheeks to act as a highlighter, I'm actually going to apply this all over my face with my Morphe sponge. And I'm just gonna kind of press it into the skin for more of a luminizing effect. I've been doing this a lot recently and it looks so beautiful. So it's not necessarily like a first impression. I couldn't wait to try out this powder. So as soon as I got it, like I stuck this bitch all over my face and she looks heavenly like she looks so luxe and luxurious like your skin will literally thank you for this like you look so glowy dewy hydrated but not in like a super glittery way if that makes any sense so i'm going to just pat it on the back and then i'm just going to kind of you know, press her into the foundation. You wanna go super light handed with this. So I always recommend just dabbing it on the back of your hand, just so that way you have that subtle glow and nothing like too, too crazy. But as you can see, my face just looks super glowy, hydrated, like drenched, if that makes sense. I love her so much. If you guys haven't tried out this powder, definitely try it out. I wanna say it comes in like two shades. She's bae all freaking day. For bronzer today, I'm gonna switch it up. I'm gonna use this matte bronzing powder right here by Laura Mercier. Like look how stinking cute. Her name is like engraved in the product, which I love. I'm going to just bronze up the skin to add some color back because honey, we lost some definition. So I'm gonna, you know, bring it back. Ooh, this is actually a really pretty bronzer. Ooh, look at that blend, honey. I wanna try out this brush right here. This is by it Cosmetics. This is the Heavenly Skin Skin Perfecting number 702 brush. It's probably meant for foundation, but I kinda wanna like pack on my bronzer with it just because it is more of a round top kabuki and I really want to cut my cheekbone, so I'm gonna stick her right here and just blend. So I will say the bronzer by Laura Mercier is beautiful on the skin. Like she blended out so seamlessly, so beautifully. Like I'm quaking at this point in time. Like she is that good. We're now gonna move on to blush. I will be using another product by Laura Mercier. This is their peach blush. Like look how stunning. I love me a good peach blush. So I'm gonna take this brush by Smashbox and I'm going to do like a little bit of a fish face like and pop it right here and i'm also going to take it a little bit on my nose because i think it looks cute like that kind of like a sunburnt effect but not quite because you know your girl don't go out in the sun like at all i do want to clean up my bronzer with a little bit of my collab powder so i'm just going to run a little bit of this right here underneath my bronzer a little bit for highlighter today i'm going to use this guy by jouet this is one of their new highlighters this is in the shade rose gold now typically i'm not really like a rose gold kind of girl but since it's new and i wanted to to try out some new stuff in today's video. I'm gonna give her a whirl. I'm gonna take her on this brush right here by Tarte and I'm just gonna do like a wash of highlight and I'm gonna focus the majority of the product right here. So that way when I smile, you can kind of see my highlight popping. I don't have like cheek fillers or anything like that. So it's not really going to pop too much up here, but I do have rather round cheeks, which is why I like to focus a lot of the product right here. If you do have an issue with like texture and stuff like that, I will say if you apply too much highlight Later in this area it can accentuate that texture like these little pimples right here but you know what honey let's embrace the texture today and let's just like ball out with this glow because she's stunning what i'm doing now is i'm just brushing away that powder i am going to go in with the mac x patrick star fall lip color in the shade ultimate diva just because i've been dying to try this out hold up this lip color beautiful like i am living for the lip color what do you guys think the last thing i want to do is dip into the shade called a vip from the armed and gorgeous palette and pop her right here in the very inner corner bitch love 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 the last and final thing i want to do in this video is go in with this this is the ciate dewy spritz when you shake her up she has the prettiest iridescence in it it is stunning and i'm going to spray this all over since i want more of a dewy look uh -huh. Ooh, I do not like the nozzle on that. Oh, do not like the nozzle on that. She came out like super wet. All right. We're gonna dry off and then we'll be right back and regroup, talk about it, all that good stuff. Oh, Ooh, 
Ooh, I am, I am deceased. Honey, do you guys see the overall makeup look? Like I'm shook, I'm living, I am all here for it. I love the eyeshadow despite some of it not blending properly. I really love the color story within the Armed and Gorgeous palette. I can't even like take that away from her. I really, really love the color story that she put together within that particular palette. Like, honey, stop, stop. Also the lip color, Patrick, we see you we see you. And for the most part, this is the final and completed look. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Also, let me know what other videos you guys want to see. I'm kind of like itching to do something a little bit different on my channel. So if you guys have any ideas whatsoever, feel free to leave them down below in the comments. I know for sure I want to do like a Sephora haul because I'm about to place a huge order over on Sephora through Ebates. Ebates is my bae. Check it out. I'll have it linked down below in the description. And with that, guys, I'm going to run. I'm going to go. I love you. Don't forget to subscribe. Three new videos every single week, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday at 9 a.m. You guys really aren't going to want to miss out because like if you don't subscribe and you don't turn on your notifications, you're missing out. <laughs> I love you. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, I'll be sure to catch you guys all on the next one. Deuces. outro of the outro don't forget to subscribe by clicking this button right here and also check out some of my other videos if you guys want to see my original video on the vault i will actually have it linked right over here so be sure to click it check it out and i'm gonna go i'm actually gonna run to the gym because your girl's getting some muscles no i'm really not i still feel super chubby but i'm gonna update you guys very very soon on what i have been doing in my week four weight loss update so stay tuned for that I love you and I'll talk to you soon.